It's the Agribusiness Report. I'm Tony St. James. Welcome to Omaha. It's the ABA Ag Bankers Conference, the 70th Ag Bankers Conference. Right into Nate Franzine, who's with First Dakota National Bank in Yankton, South Dakota. Did I get all that right? You did, you did. Nate, so good to see you. And uh, again, ABA Ag Bankers Conference, you enjoy coming to this? Uh, oh, I do. I've been coming for over 25 years and uh, former chairman of the Ag Committee and for the ABA. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's an annual event I really uh, look forward to and, and put on the calendar. Opportunity to see and visit with a lot of different lenders from across the country. Uh, maybe sometimes we, we tend to just look at what's happening in our own backyard. How important is it to, to have the, the opportunity to visit with others? I can't uh, say how important it is enough. I mean, uh, you know, I look at my career and, and any successes I've had, it's been because of mentors and networking with colleagues across the country. And, and this event is one of the biggest of those. You know, it's really, it's one of the reasons I cherish coming to it every year is uh, there's great friends uh, in this industry that I've met over the years. And uh, this is the one time of year we can all get face to face and really compare notes and talk about what's happening in our industry. Let's talk about what's happening in yeah. your industry and let's start with kind of back home. Uh, let's talk about the bank first. Uh, tell us more about the bank and then we're going to segue into what you're seeing as far as conditions around the area. You bet. So we're a, a family owned community regional bank uh, headquartered in Yankton, South Dakota, 17 locations. Uh, we've got loan production offices in Nebraska as well. Our, our core footprint is eastern and central South Dakota. Uh, we're about $2.6 billion uh, in assets. Uh, we have a, over $1.2 billion in loans out to farmers and ranchers. A uh, couple other quick things I would mention. We have a young and beginning farmer program that we put a lot of energy into uh, to help, uh, help grow the next generation of farms and ranches. And uh, we also have a consulting department that helps farms and ranches with estate planning and succession planning and those kind of things in addition to our traditional banking services and lending uh, activities. You mentioned succession planning. That, that's a, a touchy subject, but such a vital topic, especially today, right? It really is, and it always has been, but uh, I think, you know, as capital uh, needs have grown in farming, as operations have gotten a little larger and more complex, uh, the importance of planning is more important than ever. So estate planning, succession planning, and the difference between the two, uh, estate planning is planning for the transition of assets from one generation to the next. Succession planning is planning for the transition of management and decision making and uh, expertise. So two different things are kind of interconnected and uh, we really work hard to help our clients with that so that, that we know that next generation has the best chance for success. When you look uh, across uh, the entire region, you really have multiple uh, issues at this point. You've got areas that have received moisture, but probably some areas still dealing with drought. You're right. The, uh, the drought map would show uh, parts, of our, uh, parts of our territory are right in the heart of some of the worst drought areas. As a matter of fact, where we're headquartered in Yankton was one of those areas really in the in the darkest color on the drought map, which is not where you want to be. Uh, thank goodness for crop insurance. Uh, with higher commodity prices, the crop insurance guarantees were at uh, uh, good levels this year, and that's going to be a savior in those areas where we got hit the hardest. We'll be able to uh, kind of hold things together and, and move to the next year. Obviously, you'd much rather grow grow a crop and uh, and get your revenue from the, from the market, but uh, uh, no doubt we'll have a little of both. Uh, some of our areas had very very good yields, uh, average to better, and, and then certainly we had uh, uh, segments in our, our territory that uh, had well below average yields, and that's where the crop insurance is going to be so vital. For those who did grow a crop, facing some historic input costs, how have you been able to manage that? Yeah, that's the challenge as, I, as we look forward, really. Uh, you know, fortunately, if you look back in farm and ranch performance and we track this really closely with our client base but certainly at the conference here today we talked with FinBin and FinPAC, the people from the Center for Farm Financial Management in Minnesota, uh, their data aligns with ours quite well. The last 
two years have been good years for agriculture. Uh, strong profitability, uh, which has improved uh, working capital and liquidity, improved equity, and so good news is farmers are positioned quite strongly right now, and uh, that's that's a good way to be going into uh, inflation and higher input cost environments. Um, the projections we look at as we look to the next year or two, it, it, no doubt costs are going to continue to go up. Um, hopefully these commodity markets stay strong, but there's no guarantees there. And so um, I would expect margins will tighten a little bit here as we look to the next couple of years uh, for all the reasons we talked about. Input costs rising, interest rates rising, which will increase the cost of borrowing. And, uh, and then, you know, you throw in the risk of a recession out there and there's some there's some potential bumps in the next uh, next couple of years ahead. Have your producers had any challenges as far as the crop they're producing, getting it to the end buyer? Have we experienced some of those issues back home? Yeah, I think in general, uh, we've been doing okay there, although there is concerns as we look forward, right? Uh, there's some barge, uh, uh, shipping concerns on the Mississippi with lower uh, water levels because of some of the drought that's been hitting uh, parts of the country. And of course, we've got this rail strike out there looming uh, that you know would be a, a significant setback to shipping our products. Uh, so far, so good though. I think our, our folks have been able to get their, their crops marketed that they needed to get marketed and are finding, uh, finding a home for it and a buyer and, and uh, good prices. We talk about ag and in uh, your region, we're also talking about really the economic engine for many communities. Uh, and maybe we can use this as a segue to possibly an opportunity when we talk about crush. Yeah. What's happening there? Yeah, I think that's probably one of the most exciting things as I look at the ag industry in general um, in the next few years. Um, no secret to most of your listeners probably, there's a lot of crush plants uh, on the drawing board and what's really driving that is rapidly growing demand for renewable fuel, right? Renewable uh, diesel and uh, there's a crush plant just on the drawing board just north of Mitchell, South Dakota, right in the middle of our footprint, but there's several others on the drawing board around the Midwest and around the country. Um, you know, the demand that we'll have for soybeans is going to be a game changer in the market. It'll be a disruptor to the markets, uh, much like ethanol was uh, during the, the last super cycle, as we often refer to it as, you know, really pushing demand for corn much higher as ethanol, the ethanol industry grew and blossomed. Uh, it appears this could be what we're, what we're heading into on the, on the oils. So it will be soybeans for sure, sunflowers, canola oil. All of those uh, crops will be players in this, uh, in this rapidly growing demand for renewable fuels. At the end of the day, you've got to manage those margins. And right. we've seen some opportunities for revenue coming into the farm that really you have a hard time putting on the, uh, on the drawing board when you're penciling things in to start the season. I'm talking about government payments right yeah. now. Is there some concern as we move into 23? Yeah, but it'll be interesting. You know, government payments was a huge part of profitability back in 2020, you know, coming out of the pandemic, whether it was CFAP or PPP. I mean, you know, there was a significant amount of the net profit in farms and ranches was coming from Uncle Sam. That dropped off significantly in 2021, uh, rightly so, right? We're, we were coming out of the pandemic. Uh, this year, it'll be a, a reasonable number in the way of crop insurance, but again, that's insurance and farmers pay p premiums for that. So that's, that's not just a direct check from the, the federal government. So, um, you know, that'll be interesting. We're, we're about to go into writing a new farm bill. Uh, you know, it, it expires in a year or so. And so, yeah, that'll be things to keep our eye on. Um, it's an interesting dynamic um, to write a farm bill. On one hand, we have higher commodity prices, which generally tends to work against us in the farm bill process because people think we don't need support. You know, we've got high prices, we're, we're in good shape, but all we got to do is look to these, uh, this inflation environment and rapidly rising input costs. And uh, it'll be important we get, get the safety net, safeguards and the support in place um, that, we've, that we've needed in the past. Uh, you know, certainly uh, 
there'll be budgetary challenges too from the federal government side. So there'll be pressure to, to trim, I'm sure, in, in certain areas. So that'll be an interesting process to, to, uh, for the ag industry to stay engaged in as uh, we go through the next year or two. I'm also wondering, kind of the, the last question here for you, uh, you're talking to producers now, and maybe they're, they're your customers, but maybe producers from across the country. Yeah. Uh, what, what words would you offer to them as far as dealing with the lenders and, and making sure everybody's on the same page? What would you offer to them as we go into 23? Yeah, it's probably the same fundamental advice I would always say. Communication, 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 it's really key. Um, you know, the ag industry is a relationship business. Certainly, uh, it is about price and competitiveness, but it's also about that relationship and the commitment your bank, your lender has to, to your industry for the long term. Uh, we're coming out of good times, and so uh, um, it seems easy in some regards, but we know uh, input costs are rising rapidly, margins are getting compressed. So having a good partner is going to be really vital. And you know, one of the things that we continue to talk to about with our customers is um, be be conservative in these good times. You know, uh, uh, most people are positioned pretty well financially, but we see some bumps coming. So don't 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 grow too fast. Don't be over anxious. Uh, keep yourself positioned strong so that you can best weather any bumps that might be ahead. And I think that's that's the best advice we can give. Uh, at the moment in time we're in. Nate, if we want to learn more uh, about the, the operation, the bank, are you online? We are, firstdakota.com. Uh, we have a tab on ag, it, uh, so you can click on that and get real specific about our ag banking uh, solutions and our ag banking team, which I'm extremely proud of. We've got a great team of professionals that, that take great care of our farmers and ranchers every day. So you bet you can get out there and, and learn all about First Dakota National Bank. I got to put in a plug, we're celebrating 150 years this year, so it's our sesquicentennial, and we've been having a lot of fun with that, uh, being the oldest bank in the Dakota Territory. So, uh, yeah, proud of our bank. So what do you give for the 150th anniversary? It's not diamonds, it's not gold, is it uh, soybeans? There you go, <laughs> soybeans it is. So, yeah, we've been having a lot of fun uh, in, in various ways with our clients and the communities we serve. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Nate Franzine with First Dakota National Bank from the 2022 ABA Ag Bankers Conference in Omaha. I'm Tony St. James. It's the Agribusiness Report.